Long-time subscribers to the channel know that we have one very special fan, a super fan, Nico. In episode 8, I reported on Nico's unfortunate encounter with a common house cat. Turns out that my reporting was not quite accurate. Nico texted me with a request for a correction. To set the record straight, Nico, whilst visiting a friend, absolutely did not surprise the house cat by grabbing it from behind. No, he was in the corridor, minding his business, when a huge, hungry feline attacked him out of nowhere. It was probably a tiger, maybe even a saber-toothed tiger, jumping by this tooth the, dug the doctors dug out of his thumb. Fun fact, something most people don't know is that these striations in a tiger's tooth, they kind of look like growth rings, but each one represents the consumption of one French engineer. Nico was very lucky not to become the next layer of that cat's tooth. Now I hear you. A hungry saber-toothed tiger prowling around the inner city hipster district of Vienna sounds a little improbable. I had my doubts as well. So I hit the local university's research library and I found this excellent encyclopedic uh, reference textbook documenting many such feline attacks. So please, be careful out there. Look after yourselves and your families. And if you know of any mechanical types who are at home bored right now like Nico is, please share a link to this video. Hi and welcome back to the channel. This week I'm going to be working on finishing off fitting the cross slide to the saddle and then I'll be scraping the saddle ways, both the flat ways and the V ways. Some of the comments I've received sort of got me thinking about where am I going with this project and realistically I haven't thought that hard about it. I started this project for a number of reasons. One was to learn to scrape in a whole machine. I've done a little bit of scraping before. I guess the second thing was I already had it. It's been sitting around in my workshop in the corner collecting dust for a few years because I've got a, a much bigger industrial lathe uh, and it was kind of a waste leaving it sitting around doing nothing. So I'd been watching some of the pretty cool YouTubers like uh, this old Tony who's just does the most entertaining videos. Also some of the more just home shop uh, channels like AEOs out there and that was a third motivator for this was to try and do a series. I've really enjoyed Bad Obsession Motorsports Project Blinky over the last few years. They basically converted everything on that car to something different. But it'd be kind of fun to do a, do a sort of a video series of my own. And I hope you guys are enjoying it. Well, let's get the show on the road. What we're going to do is scrape in the flatways first. So for that, I'm going to need to ink up the cross slide as a master. So we'll use a reasonably heavy layer of blue ink to start with because at the moment we won't have much contact on the saddle that's already not looking too bad this is not the first time the saddle's been scraped I scraped it years ago when I first made the steel cross slide so as you can see it's not going to need a terribly heavy scraping, it's just going to need a bit of a touch up. We've got a bit of wear towards the end so it kind of drops off, but otherwise it's looking reasonably good. So let's see how that new scraper works. Some of the questions and comments I've received on this project sort of go in the direction of when will it be completed and really I haven't given it a lot of thought. I'm enjoying the, the journey as much as the the idea that it's going to be a finished, pro, finished lathe again at some stage. This time I'm going to start a grain from scratch basically with the Linux CNC build using Mesa cards. I also want to use a touch screen. I've got a small industrial keyboard for it so this plenty of more work to do even once I've finished this mechanical stuff. Um, I, I will repaint it of course but I'm not going to go crazy about 
trying to turn the slave into a harding or a shelblin or something it's it's not and something it will never be at the end of the day it is still a 7 by t uh, 12 Chinese lathe and it's never going to be as stiff or as capable as a, a high quality industrial lathe is. I just realized why that scraper was cutting poorly. Scrapers are cut with a not a horizontal end but with about a 5 degree maybe 3 to 5 degree negative rake. I'd honed mine to a 3 degree positive rake. So that's why it wasn't cutting well. Oh, that feels much better. This is now the third pass. This is the fifth pass, as you can see by my tally there. It's starting to come in quite nicely. If you want to see more detail on, on um, scraping, I'll put a link up here in the, in the corner to some of my earlier videos, okay? I've now done 10 passes. I'm fighting a low spot down in this corner, down here. So basically I'm still doing roughing cuts through here, which is why there aren't that many points. This side is, would be nearly finished, but of course I need to keep taking it down to, uh, till I can get this corner uh, cleared up, basically through this area. So still more roughing to go. Up to 13 passes now, and I'm still fighting to bring this corner in. It's slowly getting better, but there obviously had quite a nasty drop off here. There was a comment from Andy Pugh in the, in the, in the comment section of the last video, pointing out that using steel, like mild steel, for the cross slides, probably not ideal. And he's perfectly right. I mean, his comment was that I should have used something with a higher uh, Young's modulus, like, uh, was it osmis, osmisium or something? Some sort of unobtainium joke, of course, but he is definitely right. Uh, mild steel running on cast iron is probably not an ideal pairing of uh, materials. But when I did, when I first made this, I made this cross slide this way so that it would be nice and low profile to allow and enable the maximum possible swing over the bed, which um, yeah was kind of questionable logic then and still is. But I've got it, so I'm not going to replace it. By the way. Andy Pugh's got one of the coolest um, lathes ever made, an English Holbrook, and he's done an amazing job of converting it to CNC. Uh, he's, uh, he's one of the main supporting guys on the Linux CNC forum, so I would seriously suggest that you check out the link in, my, in the uh, description below and have a look at the awesome work Andy's done, including a complete iron casting of the hand wheel carriers for his CNC lathes. So, awesome work. After 17 passes, I've now got a pretty even coverage across both flats. Uh, this is a rather heavy uh, bluing just to make it show up better on the camera. So, I think that's going to be good enough, and now it's time to move on to the dovetails. The next task is going to be to scrape both these two dovetail ways. Now because the top slide is longer than the cross slide, this is going to be the master. Now the first thing I need to do is measure to find out is, are these uh, ways actually parallel. And to do that, I'm using carbide 
in mills. Once again, just a bit of scrap. And to actually measure them, I'm using uh, gauge blocks. And as you can see, I've already done the measurement. That's why the number's already written down there. So what I've got, yeah, one and a half tenths of sort of ball shape, I guess. It starts narrowest down this end, balls out to a maximum across here, and then tapers back in. This is my gauge block set. It was a cheapie I bought off uh, eBay. The fact that someone's engraved uh, bilagen into it, bilagens in this context probably means it was used kind of as parallels. So it's obviously a worn out set. It's probably failed calibration for industrial use, but it's a good Swiss set. The um, the couple that are I've using are using are these ones at the moment. I'm only missing um, the f half micron. And I'm also missing the one that makes up a 15, but there's two other ones which, which um, fit there. As I say, it's a reasonably worn set. The blocks don't easily ring together like they should. But now see these, these two only just ring together if you really push them. But still, I'm sure they're still accurate enough for the sort of work that I do in my basement. Just to check those numbers, what I've done is um, using the same carbide end mill, I found the thinnest portion across, across the side here, zeroed out, and then measured the thickness at each, each of these other locations, basically, and what that gives the same picture, okay, so Across here is the widest, and then these parts get thicker, so the, the gap gets thinner towards both ends. So we have that sort of um, ball shape. That means I'm going to need to get stuck in scraping um, hardest or rough scraping both ends first. But before I start that, I have to do the same as I, each, as I do each time, go in and cut a gutter into the um, corner of the do uh, dovetail. One thing I find important when scraping is to get the surface to be scraped at a nice flat and accessible angle. So what I'll do, I'll use this offcut of wood and make up some sort of a, a holding jig, hold down jig, to be able to hold the uh, dovetails at, at this angle so I can get in there nicely with the, with the scraper. Done a couple of roughing passes across there to get the surface started, and now I need to touch off to see how things are going. Given how ball shaped this was at the start, I have no great expectations of much of a contact. 
it's also not that easy to touch off because it's such a small thin way okay so that's pretty with a pretty heavy inking we do have little contact at the bottom a little bit in the middle and a little at the end that was the way that had the least distortion before now let's just re-ink it up and have a look at the other side this one had much a much greater bow in it okay yeah so here there's just a tiny little patch of contact at this end and at this end and nothing in between that's going to need a lot of roughing I decided now to start scraping in this one side which will give me a reference surface to measure the first V-way against and once I've got that nice and parallel and straight then I'll go back to measuring the distance across and, and scrape this uh, V-way so that it's parallel to the side and to the other V-way The sound quality of the internal mic in the camera is pretty terrible. So to improve things I bought this lapel microphone from, from Amazon. The microphone itself is kind of cool, seems to work quite nicely, but I was trying to use it through a, just an app on the, on the phone and yeah, I'd make too many mistakes with setting sound levels as you've noticed on those last few clips. Really sorry about that, I think they were recorded at, uh, at just much too low a level. To prevent that sort of um, error happening again, I've now bought this little this little Sony sound recorder. I mean, the thing's tiny; it's like quite a bit smaller than a phone. Had quite good reviews, and I got it off uh, off the Austrian version of Craigslist for next to nothing. The funny thing is, it turned out it was actually new in a box, and the guy who sold it to me, Eric from Salzburg, was just the nicest guy to deal with. He offered to send it for less than the, the uh, price of postage. I, of course, paid him the full price of postage, but he actually sent it before he had even received the money from me. So, Eric from Salzburg, thanks very much. Hopefully, this is the solution that we get better audio quality on all the videos from now on. Thanks a lot. I've now finished uh, straightening up this edge, but as you can see from these numbers, I've got uh, still got 48, 55, 15, 7, 0, 3, 23 in, um, in microns of thickness to, to take off and straighten up here. So I've still got a bit of a hollow through the middle. But I'm going to leave this for now. I'll uh, post this video and we'll continue on the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, yeah, please subscribe. Please leave a like. I appreciate your comments and feedback. And catch you next time. Bye.